The Air Force is really important in modern armies. It's the most flexible part of a combined armed force. They can shoot faraway missiles, destroy enemy radars with special missiles, do quick spine missions, and most importantly, attack targets that regular weapons cannot reach. One of the biggest reasons why Putin's invasion of Ukraine didn't work well is that Russia's air force could not control the sky there. Right from the start of the war, lots of Russian planes were shot down. This made them stay far from the fighting area and launch rockets and bombs from Russia or Belarus to be safe. They couldn't help much with close-up fighting support, especially after the first weeks of the war. This surprised experts who thought Russia's much bigger air force would easily win control of the sky over Ukraine. Russia has seen more than 400 of its aircrafts, both fixed-wing and helicopters, destroyed, while Ukrainian sources claim the losses for Russia are even higher, exceeding 600 when counting fighter planes and attack helicopters together. Are the old Soviet aircrafts the reason behind Russia's poor performance in the air? That argument seems weak, given that Ukraine operates very similar Soviet airplanes mainly the MiG-29 Fulcrum and Suhoi Su-27 flanker jets. The Russian Air Force has been gradually replacing its older Soviet aircraft with a Su-35. Yet, even these advanced planes are being shot down. The lack of experienced pilots A more challenging aspect to replace is the experienced pilots. Skilled pilots are incredibly hard to replace. US and many other countries, once they see a skilled pilot proving his abilities in the battlefield, they kind of retire him from fighting and assign him to pass on his expertise in aerial combat to less experienced pilots. While Russia, on the other hand, once a skilled pilot proves his capabilities in a real combat situation, they start counting on him for some further, more dangerous missions. This allowed the loss of these veteran pilots and has significantly weakened Russia's overall ability to train new aviators. This deficiency in pilot training might be the primary reason for Russia's substantial losses in the air campaign. However, why is Russia deploying relatively inexperienced pilots into combat in the first place? And is there any feasible action they can take to reverse this trend? More significantly, the Soviet Union and later Russia viewed their air force as an extension of their artillery capabilities. The primary purpose was to provide close air support and carry out long-range attacks against various ground targets. Just as they employed vast numbers of artillery to overpower adversaries, they structured their air force and the aircraft flown by their pilots to be tough, durable, and numerous. The Soviet Air Force had the mission to overpower opponents with sheer numbers, similar to their approach in countering NATO countries through their considerable advantage in tanks and artillery. In the end, the crux of the matter is the pilot in the cockpit. Despite these distinctions in quality and quantity, the Russian Air Force was regarded as the second best globally. Inexperienced in a real-life combat While the United States and Western nations had opportunities to gather valuable experience from many real combat situations, Russia had only limited exposure to active combat in Syria. However, these operations were significantly different from the intense combat environment in Ukraine. Russian forces in Syria faced less equipped rebels, a far cry from the well-equipped Ukrainian army supported by NATO. Additionally, the geography of the two theaters varied significantly. Russia's air operations in Syria were predominantly over desert regions with scattered urban areas, while Ukraine's landscape comprises forests, hills, and river valleys, making it considerably more challenging to spot potential threats. And unlike Syria, the US supplied Ukraine with more than 17,000 manpads, including the highly effective Stinger missile, which inflicted substantial damage on low-flying Russian aircraft and helicopters. While they've been gradually gaining experience, this has come at a high cost. Between 300 and 500 of their finest frontline pilots have been lost. This sort of experience is irreplaceable. Some of these pilots were even instructors at Russian Air Force training units, thrust into combat duty to compensate for the attrition their units faced. Comparing Russian training to US and NATO training The significance of training hasn't been held in a high regard within Russian priorities as it has been for Western nations. One potential explanation stems from the considerable discrepancy in budget allocation. The United States designates around $877 billion for its annual defense budget 
which stands in stark contrast to Russia's allocation of a mere $87.9 billion. Approximations of corruption in Russia have surged to a staggering 40%, with senior officers channeling funds away from various sectors, including stockpiles of weaponry, fuel reserves, equipment maintenance, and yes, training. This deeply entrenched culture of corruption has notably hindered Russian pilot training, mirroring its impact across all aspects of the country's military operations. Russia's Air Force finds itself unable to allocate the required time and resources to accommodate fledgling pilots, thereby impeding their acquisition of essential flying skills. While NATO member nations anticipate their pilots accumulating between 150 to 200 hours of flight training annually, Russian pilots might count themselves fortunate to achieve even half of that range, collecting approximately 70 to 120 hours per year. Russian pilots, possessing limited experience in aerial combat conducted over vast forested terrains, found themselves confronting adversaries equipped with advanced air defense systems. Prior to the invasion, these pilots received scant training in countering such tactics, as knowledge of the impending full-scale invasion was confined to Putin's inner circle. In contrast to Russia, the United States administers the renowned adversary school Red Flag. This comprehensive air combat exercise brings together diverse aircraft in realistic scenarios, pitting them against aggressive aircraft and pilots specially trained to mimic the strategies and tactics of adversary nations. Every year, nations allied with the United States contribute their pilots, aircraft and support teams to partake in Red Flag, aiming to replicate combat training under expensive and authentic conditions. This collective effort strives to cultivate a heightened sense of readiness for real-world combat scenarios. Lack of proper strategies In a strategic move that seemed to dismiss the necessity of extensive training and thorough preparation, Putin's decision left both soldiers and officers in a state of bewilderment when they unexpectedly received orders to initiate the invasion of Ukraine. This lack of comprehensive readiness exposed Russian pilots to a situation where they were ill-equipped to confront the formidable air defenses that Ukrainian forces had meticulously put into place. The consequences of this lack of preparation reverberated through the Russian Air Force, contributing to the overall limited effectiveness observed. However, it's crucial to note that this was not solely a result of inadequate training. Various factors played a role, including strategic choices made at the higher echelons of command. Russia's limited air units also faced a significant challenge as a result of the strategic decisions taken. With the initiation of ground assaults, Russia encountered unexpected and strong resistance from Ukrainian forces. In response, the Russian Air Force was compelled to rapidly shift its focus from targeting Ukrainian air defenses to providing close air support for the ground troops. This shift, while tactically driven, came at a cost. The inability to secure air superiority hindered Russia's air force, requiring them to operate at lower altitudes where they became susceptible to weaponry such as the US-manufactured Stinger missiles and other man pads supplied by NATO. As a result, this adjustment in strategy culminated in the unfortunate loss of numerous helicopters and fighter jets during ground attack missions that ultimately proved unsuccessful. The ramifications of inadequate training, particularly in navigating the intricate dynamics of complex and contested airspace, have been strikingly evident in several instances. The lack of practical experience and readiness in such scenarios has led to costly mistakes, with pilots sometimes struggling to maneuver effectively, respond to unexpected threats or execute coordinated actions. This stands in stark contrast to the approach taken by the United States exemplified by the well-regarded adversary school known as Red Flag. This annual air combat exercise offers a comprehensive platform for various aircraft to engage in intricate scenarios against adversary planes, guided by pilots trying to replicate the strategies and tactics of opposing nations. The exercise serves as a crucial opportunity for pilots to experience the challenges and demands of real-world combat conditions, fostering adaptability and strategic thinking in a controlled environment. Latest Documented Fails of Russian Aviation One notable incident took place on March 14, 2023, when two Su-27s attempted to divert an unmanned MQ-9 Reaper drone flying across the Black Sea. During the attempt to force the drone down by dumping fuel on it, 
One of the Su-27s seemingly collided with the drone due to flying in dangerously close proximity. Whether this collision was intentional or an outcome of insufficient training remains unclear. Other instances underscored the ramifications of poor training, ranging from fighters prematurely deploying their decoy flares, making them susceptible to patient man pets operators, to inexperienced pilots failing to account for turbulence and crashing during joint takeoffs. There was even an episode in early May 2023 where two fighters and a pair of attack helicopters were unintentionally shut down by their own air defense systems, possibly due to inadequate coordination with local radar operators. The recent European conflict has genuinely caught us all off guard. We had long regarded Russia as one of the most formidable nations, yet the unfolding events have prompted us to reassess its standing in the global hierarchy. Given the current situation, where would you put Russia in the list of world's strongest countries? That's it for this episode, see you in the next one.